uh, Society for Data Science, uh, which uh, which uh, is abbreviated as S4DS. So this is a forum by which you know we are not limited to only a yearly meeting. So Society for Data Science uh, works quite heavily to build up and nurture this you know uh, data science ecosystem. Uh, through different uh, colleges, uh, industry, and academia at large. Okay, so there are quite a lot of activities that Society for Data Science has been doing for you know last few years, apart from the apart from the uh, conference. Okay, so uh, these are the faculty development programs, various student chapters, webinars, uh, hackathons. You know, also there are some internships that are going on. So uh, one of the things the, of today's, uh, today's motivation was that we saw when we were interacting. What we saw is uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, what I would say, a lot of fast paper blue, okay, that how to get started. Okay, so from that motivation, uh, we uh, thought of having this uh, uh, webinar and who can be better a person from, you know, having someone from the publishing uh, side uh, on Indoda with so much of experience and other side of Lancer, uh, so much of experience, uh, you know, in, in uh, writing papers, in mentoring, okay, uh, in editing different, uh, you know, reputed and top tier journals. So I would uh, uh, take the opportunity to, to uh, brief you about some of the statistics of ICDMI. So this is from last year, you see, and uh, probably it will be highlighted, but you can choose a conference, uh, you know, from the acceptance or rejection rate a particular conference has. So you see that, you know, 223 uh, papers we received in uh, 2021 and around uh, uh, 62 of them were uh, accepted okay and uh, uh, participants were so if you go to the next slide or intro so the participants were around 15 states from uh, india as well as uh, you see that there were a uh, lot of authors who were international so 62 authors were uh, from outside of india and uh, if you go to the next slide uh, we will see that uh, you know uh, this is how ICDMI uh, citations have been. So you know that uh, the papers, merely publishing the papers is uh, like not enough. They are acknowledged by the amount of citations they are receiving, right? So this is, uh, this is uh, a citation that you see of different volumes of ICDMI starting from 2018, 2021, naturally uh, the citations have not come up. And uh, I will just try to give you the number. So, you know, uh, I think 2018, uh, including both the volumes, we have touched more than 500 citations. And uh, so the number of papers were in the range of 75 to 80. So there is an echo. If you know you are not speaking, I'll request you to go on mute. Yeah. So the uh, and and the citations are more than hundred. So part like each paper has been cited around you know one point two five to one point four number of times, and uh, like twenty nineteen citations are also coming out very greatly. Okay. So now if you uh, go to the next slide. Uh, so this has been the you know paper acceptance and uh, rejection rate. So the you know uh, acceptance rate has always been between this twenty to thirty percent. Okay, maybe uh, maybe with some exceptions because you know that particular year's uh, you know specificity. Okay, so I think uh, that that is one of the things that we wanted to uh, you know highlight about ICTMI's uh, like focus on quality, uh, the reviews that we try to ensure the technical board that we try to uh, put together here and uh, we'll be very happy so the s4ds uh, is uh, like uh, is a very closely knit team and you can find out about us from this s4ds site okay so you have uh, our president Amol Goje sir, uh, you have Amlan Chakraborty sir, who will also be speaking today, uh, Neha Sharma ma'am, Inderjit uh, sir, Atul, uh, myself, Manjaya, so you can get in touch with us and if, if you have any further queries. So I don't want to take you know more time from the main program. 
right so uh, let let us all enjoy the feast that we have for today over to you aritro i think uh, you can uh, take the proceeding further thank you thank you shaptoshi sir <clears throat> now i would like to invite our first speaker mr onindo bosch senior publishing editor of stringer with a demonstrated history of working in publishing industry much of the success of icdmi as shaptoshi sir already mentioned about icdmi is due to springer along with mr onindo bosch he is skilled in art direction journals copy editing proof reading and leadership strong media and communication professional with a master degree in business administration focused with marketing research from symbiosis institute of management studies india so onindo sir over to you Uh, thank you, thank you, Aritro. You want to uh, you want to say anything, Shatrushi? Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Before I go to my presentation, uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone from S4DS for organizing this. Uh, Shatrushi said that uh, it's Friday evening. I still believe, you know, the moment it is 5:30 on Friday, you know, weekend starts. That that is how the, our global, uh, you know, setup was before the pandemic. But interestingly, with pandemic, you know, uh, it's like 24 into 7. everyone is working for 7 uh, days uh, and 24 hours you really don't know because everyone most of the people are working from home so things have become so flexible that uh, you really don't know at what time you are working and other and what time you are doing some other chores and you are needed for something or other at your home front also there is a diffi difficult time you know uh, i would say uh, it's not an easy time for anyone and as uh, shaptorshi said you know in last uh, second wave which we had had a terrible time you know we lost many of our close people and i think every family in india is directly or indirectly affected by the second wave but as he said the show must uh, goes on you know and this is a uh, uh, the this whole thing was conceptualized you know a couple of i think two weeks back uh, as i said 10 days or i so we had a uh, talk and we thought we will just give a good presentation about uh, the best practices and the productivity tools and uh, omlan can also talk to you about the conceptualization and how to go and publish so these are different things differ always these questions you know they come to your mind but sometimes you really don't know where to go you know now you know that s4 ds there are so many members and uh, shaptorshi has already told you all their names and you can go to them you can ask them and if you have any specific question about uh, publishing uh, you want to know anything about it so i am the person you can see me uh, right now and you can i will share my detail contact details also so you can definitely uh, come and uh, you can write to me you can call me and uh, so i will just share the screen first so that we can go to the presentation I hope you all can see the slide right now. Correct? The presentation is visible. Yes, yes, yes it, is visible. it is visible. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, you know, uh, the the name of my pr presentation over here uh, is uh, not not suggested uh, by me. It is suggested by Shaptorshi. You know, he said productivity tools and best practices. I never talk about productivity tools. You know, I always talk about publishing tools. The reason is, you know, productivity. The word uh, itself talks about quantity. you know the moment moment you say productivity you know you think about you know being a productive thing you have to uh, think about some quantity and uh, the, this uh, tool these tools will help you to uh, increase your uh, productivity or uh, increase your uh, quantity of work uh, i am a very very big believer of quality and uh, i don't believe in quantity to be very honest with you and i see productivity tools as such as a you know which is basically saving your time so that you can produce quality you know and we will talk about all these uh, tools uh, and we will try to see how these tools can actually help you 
because uh, the important thing is uh, production or producing more is not our aim you know uh, the aim is to produce a quality so that uh, you are recognized so that uh, scientific uh, community uh, can be helped so that you know you get uh, better citations as uh, you have seen certain numbers uh, when shoptoshi was presenting uh, about icdmi uh, the rejection rates or the acceptance rates or how the citations worked for different year uh, proceedings we will talk something in detail also about them so let's start and i think you will be little surprised to see a photograph of a jaguar a beautiful wonderful uh, and a powerful creature on the slide right now interestingly today is a world jaguar day i don't know how many of you know that in 2019 this is something which started uh, but unfortunately you know uh, jaguar is the most threatened big cat in the americas although it is one of the most powerful uh, animal in the world you know if you look at the big cat family uh, jaguar is always uh, recognized as a strength but it is uh, there's another quote which was given long back by charles darwin another my very favorite uh, you know scientist he said it is not the strongest of the species that survives not the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change see why why i uh, actually put this quote over here because we know that there are so many changes which are happening around us and we have to be really really adaptive to them because you know uh, in last 20 years if you see uh, the whole because of internet everything has changed you know the way uh, you see the publishing the way you see the uh, whole research community uh, communication the way they are actually collaborating the institutes are being ranked you know if everything is uh, been changed in last 20 years very drastically because of internet and because of digitization of everything so this is something very important to understand and with this pandemic coming you know in last one and a half years we have to be very adaptive with the changes otherwise it is very difficult for us to you know even go along with it because you know if if you see the first wave first wave came and it went but second wave has affected everyone as i said and now the situation is like this institutes are closed uh, lab, labs are closed so you cannot go and you cannot do any experiment over there how much you can actually produce sitting at home with only theoretical knowledge so it is very very challenging for everyone for faculties for students for everyone uh for us also because uh, uh, you know the numbers have really increased in publication world if you see the numbers which we are getting are very high but at the same time the quality is again is a big issue you know and rejection rate is very high acceptance is very low so that these are the challenges which publishers are also facing so th this uh, thing is moving on and we will definitely have more challenges to face in the coming period because of many other reasons but definitely i think uh, if we try to change ourselves and mold ourselves with the uh, uh, things then it will be really helpful for us a little about the company i belong to i come from springer i am uh, almost completing 10 years in springer now 1842 is the company started in berlin by the person you can see over here is photograph i will be a little quick because i only have around half an hour to talk to you and uh, i have some good number of slides to cover so uh, and we came out in 1924 out of germany you know and we started with the office in vienna in 1946 we opened our the biggest office uh, in heidelberg now the company has name it has been changed in last 5 years and you can see everyone is talking about springer nature not springer anymore that is because you know macmillan science and education and springer they collaborated with each other in 2015 it's a joint venture now we have 10000 plus colleagues and we are operating in 50 different countries and we have much more portfolios in, involved in our uh, particular uh, portfolio of springer nature because now we have paul gray for uh, behavioral sciences social sciences we have educational books for schools and there are so many different portfolios correct beside research because springer was totally into research publication but we have added many more other domains and other areas also in our kitty uh before i I go to uh, specific tools you know i would like to tell you that we have a lot of author services and it's not that the only springer has author services 
all if you are already publishing uh, or if you are about to publish or people who are publishing for long you know there are many of your the faculties must be here and they are do, publishing a, a lot with the different publishers not only springer so these kind of author services are available not only from springer from all good publishers you know but you need to understand who are these good publishers good publishers are the publishers who can actually disseminate your work well that means they can actually take your work to the readers because the objective is to uh, you know your work should be read and then people can cite that and if people are reading your work and citing your work then only objective is fulfilled otherwise there is no reason for going all the way and do publishing you know so if we look at tools there are different type of tools you know there are some pre publication tools there are some intra publication tools and post publication tools i will try to touch upon a few i will share this presentation with uh, shoptor shi so that he can actually share with the participants so that you can actually go to each one of them you can actually check them and you know when you go to each one of them and you see and you try you practice you play around with the tool because i always felt that when you actually use the tool maybe it's a trial version maybe you know it's a uh, free version then you understand how this tool works and how is it is helpful for you i am it's i don't have much time to talk about all the tools over here and i will quickly talk about some of them so that it will be helpful uh, helpful for you to understand few of them and then you can go to each one of them and you can find how they work i will start with the most productive tool which is you know i feel is journal suggester you know journal suggester is a tool which actually suggest you a journal now we know how we find a journal how we select a journal where people who are very young in this and just started with their phd or research scholars and thinking of thinking of you know publishing their work in a journal so it is very important for you to find a good journal now this journal suggester tool is available at two platforms one you can see on my slide which this is a springer platform now we actually developed this tool with a company in japan which is called edans e d a n z now what is the difference between edans suggester and springer suggester when you come to springer tool the tool which you can see over here you know if you just go to our website and you would go to services or authors under authors you have journal authors and in journal authors you will find this page where you can see i have just highlighted it or i have marked with the red box over there you can see it called springer journal suggester now this is on spring page you know springer website we have almost 3700 journals and we actually try to find a uh, suggest a journal from this 3700 journals now when you go to edans tool which edans is using that is also a free tool and if you go to edans website and use journal suggester then they are using much more number of journals you know they are covering elsevier they are covering wiley they are covering teller and francis so they are covering more number of publishers good journals almost 28 to 30000 journals are there they are actually having a database of that so it's up to you if you really want to publish in springer journal you can come to springer and you can use this suggester tool if you want to see more uh, publishers you can go to edans website and you can use their tool also now i will tell you how this works now when you go to services under authors journal authors when you come to this page and when you click this particular link springer journal suggester then you go to this page you know this page opens and it is asking you some details it is asking you for manuscript title it is asking you for manuscript text and subject area and there are some more advanced features are there which i will show you in my next slide now what exactly you have to do you have to put give a manuscript title the title of your manuscript you know you have to put the manuscript title manuscript text is basically a small abstract or a small synopsis or a summary of your work now if you don't have a summary ready by that time which is quite uh, uh, you know obvious sometimes then you can write the keywords of your work over there so put the keywords the keywords of your paper not the keywords a big keywords of your subject area only the keywords of your paper you can put the subject area over here in the uh, drop down 
So what exactly I have done, I have done, I have put a very famous paper of Bose Einstein condensation. I have uh, given a small write up from their abstract. I have put subject area physics. Now there are certain more uh, options you will find over here, like minimum impact factor, minimum acceptance rate, maximum time to first decision. Now all these are optional, but if you really want to see a journal which has more than one impact factor, then you can put the value of one over there. And then you just say search, you know, once you search, a recommended journal page will open. Now, out of those 3,700 journals, the tool is actually uh, reading the article, understanding the abstract or the keywords which you have given, and try to find relevant journals for you. Now, if you see uh, the number over here, just over top, it, it's written 20. Now, 20 is basically the number of journals suggested by this tool for this particular paper. Now, the first one is the European Physical Journal A. Now, if you click the first one, then you go to the home page of that first journal. Now, if you don't like the first one, you can go to the next one and, you know, this is the way you go to the home page. Now, when you go to the home page of that journal, you can see the aims and scope. You can see where it is indexed. You can see uh, previous volumes. You can see the acceptance rate. You can see first decision average time, their impact factor. So all these data is available on the home page of a journal of a good publisher always. So once you read them and you understand, okay, my paper is suitable for this yeah. journal then you can go and you can submit your paper. So you don't have to ask anyone for or uh, for this particular journal. You can actually use the tool and find this journal. Now, why this journal is, uh, why this tool is very important, you know, sometimes what's hap happening because, you know, but, journal, uh, new journals are coming up every day and uh, good new journals are also coming up. So it's not possible for you to know all the journals. You know, sometimes you know some journals and you are uh, already, you are getting recommended uh, those, get recommending those journals from your friends, peers, or sometimes by your mentor or guide, but there are new journals which are coming up. So these new journals, they also sometimes appear over here and it is easy for you to find a new journal which is useful for your work. There's another uh, tool which is very, very, very important. And I think everyone should go to this tool. This is author and reviewer tutorials. This is a very, very good tool, which really increases your productivity because, you know, this is a page where uh, you get to know what is your role and what is your functionality functionalities as an author or as a reviewer you know there are tutorials there are videos which are available there are uh, there are platforms where you can communicate with other authors and reviewers so this page is very very useful for people who are author and reviewer and and interestingly in this industry you know the people who are already uh, publishing they know very well that when you this is a place where you are an author and you are a reader the same person is an author and the same person is a reader you know when you are writing you are an author when you are downloading and reading you are a reader and at the same time you are getting different uh, you know uh, uh, mails from people or uh, different uh, mails from different journals for reviewing the work so you are also a reviewer so the same person having different character and they are playing at different time so author and reviewer tutorials i think is very very important because you get to know so much over here and you get to learn what all different rules are there what all ethics you have to follow this is a good a place to read. You know, my, my whole presentation, I will talk about something which is very important is reading, you know, reading is something which I believe is the most important thing. And you are in a particular field, or you are a part of a community, which is like, you know, you have to read, read and read, you know, uh, good reading makes you a uh, good, uh, you have a good critical thinking uh, increases, your analytical skill increases, your vocabulary increases, your understanding power increases, and finally, your right Writing skills increases. You know, your writing skills become good and good when you read more. So there's another tool which is a good one, uh, which will help you to find reviewers. You know, this is a tool which help uh, because nowadays you will find whenever you are actually submitting a uh, article to a journal, they are asking mandatorily to uh, you know 
suggest some reviewers now it is always not possible for you to suggest a reviewer or a new reviewer so this tool is very helpful in that case and all, these are all free tools you know you can go to springernature.com and you can use this tool to find a reviewer what exactly you have to do you have to give the details as similarly the way you have used suggested tool similarly you have to give the details of your paper or your area or your domain then automatically you will be able to find a reviewer in that area you can communicate with that reviewer and if fees you know interested sometimes you know it, it's it's a possibility that you are finding a reviewer and you get a collaborator you know so it, it is a very interesting thing but uh, this tool will help you to find many reviewers you know for your work then we have something called oa funding support now you know very well that uh, every every uh, country is now talking about open science or open access open access and open science there is a little difference in it you can go and read about it but uh, uh, practically a majority of developed nations they are talking about open science you know and they are talking about open access and uh, developing countries are following uh, it is little uh, difficult for people in india i feel because i i am also an indian and i am working with a company global company that uh, you know we don't feature anywhere in the developed country and we don't feature in the lower or middle income group also because there are many schemes and many uh, you know uh, discounts available for lower and middle income group group countries like there are 80 to 82 countries which are getting benefits of this but and the uh, developed countries they have they are uh, having all kind of funders available you know so you if you go to this page oa funding page you will find there are more than 200 funders available but all these funders are either from western countries or very very few from asian countries india you will hardly find any uh, country who is uh, any uh, company who is actually doing some funding but there are you know global companies they have their setup in india they can really help you so it is very important for you to know about funding support so when you are planning to publish anything where it's open access so you need funding you need support because it's not possible for the institute to support every time and it is also not possible for you to actually spend so much money because we uh, authors they don't have that much fund you know to just use uh, like 2500 euros or something like that for uh, publishing a paper so you need a funder so these uh, uh, tools are these pages are very important for you where you can actually communicate with a you can find a fund you can communicate with a funder and you find more details recently in last one year this particular uh, website has been developed you can go to this website also it's oa books hyphen toolkit.org you know this is a website uh, specifically designed for people who are interested in publishing oa books so it's a oa books toolkit so if you go to this website again you will get lots of, lots of information you have to do lots of reading again and you find these information and definitely you can actually use them for your work then there is another one is called a uh, tool called recommended you know uh, why this tool is very important firstly this is a free tool secondly you know uh, it covers almost 45000 journals and why this is a good tool because uh, you know we have seen in one year if you think about how journal publishing almost 2 million plus papers are published each year in English language journals. I'm not talking about regional journals. We have a lot of regional journals in Mandarin, in Portuguese, in Spanish, in Hindi and all. But at the same time, I'm only talking about the English uh, language journals and that also publishes 2 million papers. Now, 2 million papers means almost, you know, 5,000, 4,500, 5,000 papers are published every day. It is impossible for a human being to go and find any paper at times, you know, a good paper which is useful for you. But a tool can do that, you know. If you use this particular tool, it will save lots and lots of your time. So the moment there is a paper in your area, you will get an alert mail from recommended if you register in recommended. So once you get a mail, you can just click and you can see whether that paper is useful for you or not. So you don't have to time waste time, like for searching a paper, you can get an alert and you can see, okay, this paper is useful for me. It's just a five seconds work. You know, if it is not, just delete the mail. If it is, then you can go deeper and you can see how good it is and whether it is useful for your work or not. And you can download it if possible, uh, if it is available for download. 
Uh, this is a paid one. This is a good tool, which is called Overleaf. Uh, this helps in collaborative writing and publishing. Many uh, faculties are basically using this tool, in, uh, especially in this last two years, where they are communicating with their own students by using this tool. So there are many, many other features besides collaborative writing and publishing. As I said before, you can go to these tools. This is a paid one. So you can go and you can try to download the you know trial version or the free version, and then you can see if it is is possible for you to you know how effective it is for your work there's another tool which shared it shared it is a very uh, close to my heart because shared it something i love it because uh, the most when you write a paper or in a journal or in a conference paper you want to share it with the community you know that is that is the way we human being is uh, you know the characteristics are like that that we want to share with people so you want to share it with the community now when you publish anything with us whether it's a book chapter whether it's a conference paper whether it's a journal article you get this link on the home page of your paper so you can actually go and click this button shared it and you can share it with anyone now, why this is good? Because there is a possibility that when you are sharing this, the person who is actually receiving this, they don't have access to your paper because of subscription and other things. But when you are sharing it, that person can actually see the whole paper. They can read the whole paper. They can annotate the whole paper. It will not give access to download it. But at the same time, you can actually read the whole thing. Now, how it works in a reverse way, that is also very interesting. Sometimes you go to a paper in Springer and you want to download. Suppose that paper is recommended by you, by the previous tool recommended, and you want to actually read that paper. Now, you can see the abstract, but you cannot download that paper because your institute has not subscribed to that journal or your institute has not purchased that ebook. You know, So you cannot actually read that paper, but you can write to the corresponding author of that paper, please share it with me. So where, you know, you have to use your communication skills so that you can get access. Now, there are many uh, uh, tools that are available which are uh, people are using unethically, but the share it is something where you can actually use it legally and ethically. Uh, there's another tool which is ORCID. I always recommend this tool to people. You know, ORCID, if you don't have this number with you right now, please, as a researcher, you should have go and immediately register because this gives you an unique ID and this ID helps you to have a proper citation and proper recognition of your work. Then there is a tool, and this is not a tool, this is more like a blog actually. And this is a blog, this is a blog which can be used pre publication also, post publication also, and intra also. Because when you go to this blog, you will find fantastic uh, uh, you know articles written by people from your community people from science community and uh, these articles are very very useful sometimes like uh, you can see these articles how can transformative journal journals benefit you you know seven ways nature portfolio supports you as an author how to maximize the reach and relevance of your research for so there are many articles which are available so again you have to read a lot you have to go and you have to specifically uh, schedule your time and then you have to read, read, and read. Uh, now, before I go uh, talk about best practices, again, uh, you know, the uh, best practices are like, uh, as I said, you have to read a lot. Similarly, you know, best practices is again, when you read and understand the policies well. Like uh, policies and rules and policies, knowledge of that actually something which is a best practice. Best practice it de gets developed when you have self-discipline. The most important characteristic you should have is a self-discipline. Now you will see the how policies change. Let's take an example of pandemic. You know, before pandemic, sitting at home was not a best practice. But during pandemic, in one and a half years, what is the best practice? People will tell you sit at home, don't go outside. So there is a change of policy. So in publishing world also when you are publishing there are certain policies you know and these policies are very very important now you can see the title of this particular slide it says https www.springernature.com slash in slash policies now if you go to this particular page you will find there are different policies now there are four different policies which we talk about over here so again you have to go to each policy and 
under each policy there are sub policies or there are different uh, reading materials which will help you to understand why we are actually following these policies why there are different best practices like you all good uh, publishers are part of cope cope is nothing but a body which is actually uh, it's a committee which is uh, maintaining the publication ethics you know so all good publishers are part of cope so it is very important for you to know cope so when you go to these publishing policies editorial policies research data policies open access publication policies these are different policies which are available on this page when you go to each one of them and read again you know they will really help you and these are the documents which can be referred back again and again this is not something which will actually you have to read once and you have to you know memorize or remember no, no it's not that, like that it, these are the policies which will be there and from time to time there will be you know updates in these policies also as i said so policies will change and you have to keep yourself updated so these these pages are very important for for maintaining the best practices so for knowing what exactly you have to do in your research work then there is another page which is talking about only publishing ethics for journals you know this page is like if you go to this page this is for journal editors you can see but this is the same for conference publication also this is also same for many other uh, book publication also you will find so this page will tell you publication ethics you know you, there are a lot of questions there are a lot of links which you can go and read and you can see like uh, shaptor she said in the beginning how how to uh, select a conference when you want to publish now it is very important that you select a good conference now how will you know that good a conference is good when you go to the home page of that particular volume or the book or the conference proceedings you can see always see the front matter is always free downloadable even if you don't have access to other papers front matter is always available you know you go to the front matter you read the preface you read the the front matter articles you see the kind of content which has been published you try to see the history or background of that conference where they are actually publishing what is their uh, you know rate of rejection or the rate of acceptance these are small things they will tell you about the quality of the conference they then go to the website of the conference try to see their scopes try to see who all people are actually engaged you know who are the organizers don't see who are the keynote speakers because you know keynote speakers can be big big people always but at the same time try to see who are the people who are organizing that you know are they from your field you know it is directly related to your domain or not that is very important so these are small clues which you can use and you can actually select a good journal or you can select a good conference for your paper then there is a particular page which is called rights permissions this is also very important because uh, when you work ethically it is very important to know what all permissions and rights are there uh, and how to obtain those rights you know many people re they really commit mistakes because they don't know uh, they they are not someone who wants to do something unethically they are not some someone who is basically trying to plagiarize something but because they don't know the rules they don't know the policies well they don't know what how, how to get the permission from the author how to get the permission from the publisher so they commit mistake you know and these mistakes are sometimes they call self plagiarism now self plagiarism is very uh, uh, difficult to understand for some people why why it is self plagiarized it is my work i i can publish it again definitely you can publish it again you are the content owner but for different uh, different aspects different you know functions you have given your copyright to the publisher maybe for translation work maybe for uh, selling your work so these are the different copyrights which you sign when you publish a paper so getting the copyright back is not a challenge but you need to know how to get it back so this page will tell you what all different uh, you know rules and policies are there when you are using a figure from any other paper or when you are using a table of your own work which you have published somewhere else take the copyright back you know and use it again it is not that you cannot use it again you can use it again but with a proper permission so this page will help you to understand those permissions so there are certain best practices you know but i, I always believe self discipline is the best practice and when you know the rules of the game then you actually you can actually go and publish quality then only you can actually publish uh, you know something which is relevant for the community because otherwise there is no uh, point you know you, you you might see you know people are saying that i publish six papers seven papers in a year 
I, I, I don't think it is possible, you know. If you, if you try to see that even the, the government has asked for PhD students that in three years or four years time, you have to publish two articles, why they have restricted themselves to two articles. If it is so easy to go and publish six articles, five articles per year, they should have said, okay, go and publish 20 articles in four years. It is not possible. You know, you are not doing that much science that you are, can publish six, seven, eight articles in a year. It's not possible. You know, that is only possible when you are a project in charge, you know, when you you have PhD students under you and your name is going as a guide over there rather than your own original work. So try to again focus on quality, not on quantity at all. A good paper will give you good citations, good recognition, good identity. But you know, don't try to go and see that where, whether I can have more papers going to help you anywhere you know that is what i can tell you you know at one point of time you know people will understand he is just creating papers he is not actually doing any quality, any quality. and he is not writing anything quality i will talk about four books quickly before i conclude my presentation uh, these books Books, I always uh, talk about them because I feel they are very important and they are again a reference material for uh, research people. You should go and read them and you should use them whenever needed. It's not something which you should, uh, it's a one time read. It is a book which you can read again and again when you have a query. First one is how to write and publish a scientific paper. This talks at a length about every kind of paper uh, and uh, how to basically go and write them and how to publish them. This is written by Robert A. Day and Barbara Gastel. This is the photograph of eighth edition. Ninth is out. Seventh or sixth is I think freely available over on internet. So you can go and you can download the PDF. Or if you want, you can buy this also from Amazon or Flipkart. It's not very expensive, it's uh, something around 1000 rupees. Second book is by, written by William Germano. It is by Getting It Published. This book is by a publisher, uh, written by a publisher himself. This is again talking about all the nuances of publishing world, all different terminologies, what exactly they mean and why, uh, see like, uh, but there is something called remuneration, there is something called royalty, there is something called patent, there is called volume editor, series editor. So these are different terminologies. You know, you get confused sometimes with these terminologies, what exactly the publisher is talking to me. So these are the books which will help you to understand publishing well. Then there are two books, uh, quickly I will uh, tell about both them. One is textbook of research ethics written by Sana Lu. This is used in many universities as a textbook. This talks about research ethics, which is very, very important. And recently this book was published two or two and a half years ago by uh, Dipankar Dev, Rajiv Dey and Valentina. This is engineering research methodology. This is another book for engineers where you can uh, learn about research methodology. So these are four books I always recommend. First two are all must read and you always have them with you. And whenever you need, you can go and do them. So uh, before I say thank you to you, uh, work sincerely, focus on quality, say no to academic corruption. There are a lot of corruptions, you know, stay with the best practices, uh, do whatever good is possible. You are a part of a community where, you know, unethical people are very less. So be an ethical guy and keep yourself away from academic corruption and stay happy. Uh, if you have any query, I don't know because whether we have a, uh, a time over here, what exactly how the schedule is placed. If you have any query after Omlan's talk also, we can have uh, attend that. And uh, this is my email ID on indo.post at springernature.com. If you have any query, anything specific, anything broad, uh, please write to me. I will be very happy to address your queries. Uh, I uh, have, I get a lot of mails, so I am not very, uh, you cannot get a quick reply, but definitely you will get a reply from me. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Onindo sir, for such a fantastic speech. It is really enriching. Uh, now, I would like to call our next speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Omlan Chakraborty, uh, Vice President, Society for Data Science. He is also the IEEE member and ECM IEEE Computer Society Distinguished Visitor, Distinguished Speaker of ECM, Secretary of IEEE CEDA Indian Chapter, Member of International Water Association, and he is the Associated Editor of Elsevier Journal of Computers and Electrical Engineering and Guest Editor of Spinja Journal. 
so omdan sir over to you yeah so thank you auditro and uh, uh, thanks shaptoshi to to the entire team of s4 ds and uh, so anindo has made my task pretty easy so so he has actually given all the inputs uh, which are primarily required to uh, to plan the paper to position the paper in a specific journal or conference what i will present uh, present today is on the what are the what are the good ways or what are the good practices you should uh, construct your paper okay so so that's the that's my okay, that's my goal of uh, goal of my lecture on today and it, so it will be a very brief lecture i will due to the limitation of time i will not be able to to able to get into the depth of everything but obviously through s4ds uh, uh, communication you can always connect me and we can have a lot of discussions uh, after the session so so we all know that this is a okay this is a, a thing which one of my very senior senior researcher okay who is senior senior than me argued once with me that uh, professor i that means i can do very good research right but uh, okay but what is the what is the point of actually wasting uh, such an amount of time to write a paper right because the trial version because the because the paper uh, okay i have done the research Trial i know what i have done and i feel it's good so so why a good paper is required why you have to write a paper in a good way though we are though we are not trained in terms of paper writing based on our scientific practice right that right. is a that is a practice what we need to okay need to generate okay to the to the formal process of a phd process of a phd program or from a writing a master's thesis which we have to uh, start okay so so the main issue here is that okay you are doing very good science you are doing very good research right but but you are putting back to the community right so the community has to understand right and have to get the get the flavor what you try to communicate right they shouldn't get something which you are not communicating or they shouldn't that or she shouldn't get what you are trying to communicate right so that's the that's the most important fact that why why you need to write paper in a proper way okay that 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 defines the impact of your manuscript so so there is also one one big question that uh, when i will write paper okay so so there may be different uh, different ways the conceptualization starts right you can you can have a very good experiment you can okay you can feel that hey, the experiment result is really doing good so i need to publish publish this work okay it may be it may be you have done a presentation right you have done a conceptual conceptual work it's not still being experimented or you don't have that uh, okay you didn't get the results in that level but still you have mm -hmm. presented to your group or or in some community in some forum and somebody can somebody says that hey this work mm -hmm. looks to be very very interesting right and and you are you are uh, okay it leads to some good consequences so why not you start thinking of writing in a paper uh there are many i mean informal and formal presentations which can also uh okay make you think that hey i can write a paper but there are some worse practices also that we shouldn't do that right so what happens in many of the cases what happens that i am not attached to a particular research right i have i then either i have uh shifted from the from my research and i don't know what is happening with the experiment there but some way i try to gather some data and try to try to fit it in my work and try to push it without actually making the hard work of experimentation of conceptualization and modeling okay staying in the particular lab or working in the particular lab so that is not a good practice right if you are not if you are not doing experiments if you are not handling data right it's no point of act okay publishing that as a paper okay so so next the question comes out that that oh this is a big task right how i how i achieve this so the point is don't think it in that way that hey i have to write a big paper of 22 pages in some in some in some journals or 18 pages or it's a conference paper of 6 to 8 pages and don't think it that way what you try to do you try to you try to plan sections okay you try to complete your 
task bit by bit, try to find that whether each section is appropriate. And I think, I think by this process, you will ultimately come up with a good paper. Okay, so if you think that, hey, I have to write so many pages based on my research activity, how long it will take, I don't know. Don't go in that type of, uh, okay, uh, pessimistic approach. So now, what should be your paper? What should be the content of your paper? Okay, it's pretty important. So there are sections of your paper which, which will try to try to convey, okay, convey the different components of your research, right? Like the introduction, the methods, the, the results and discussion. So, so introduction actually speaks about the, the paper, the paper in the way that why this work is important. Okay, what is the actual problem I am trying to solve here? Right, how, how, this, how this solution or how this problem is different from, from the work what has already been done in this domain. So, so the introduction section is very important, right? I'm, I have seen sometimes the student is focused more on the methodology and try to, and try to make the methodology very rigorous without giving much focus on the introduction. What you are losing, losing out is that your readers will not be interested or your reviewers will not be interested to go to the methodology <laughs> section, right? Unless the introduction section is interesting. So unless you create the, create the context, unless, uh, unless you tell, unless you uh, glorify your problem, unless you, unless you tell that what new you are trying to do in this particular work, that nobody will be interested. So this is very important. So what is the, what is the core of your, of your work in this particular research paper that needs to be briefed in the, in the introduction. Methods is obviously that means what are the, what are the, the algorithm, what are the design, what are the, what are the things you have uh, developed, right? As a, as, a, as, a, as a solution to this problem, okay? And, and then the results is a sort of, okay, your findings, right? You have developed a methodology, you have, you have experimented with your technique, right? And you have got some outcome based on some, based on some, data or real experiments, right? And that, 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 that result tells you that how, how better is your method. That is a justification of your method, right? So you, have to, so you have to do it in such a way so that the justification, okay, can be, can be accepted by the community, right? And discussion is again, a sort of critical analysis of what you have done. Basically, you try to explain the a result section in a different, in a different forms, such that it justifies that what what the gap what you have mentioned in an introduction. This is what the, uh, this is a research gap. Okay, what extent you have met the gap, right? And what is still there to be worked out, right? Which you can which you can tell that the other researchers or you may be focusing it on the okay on the next part of your work or in your next paper. So, so as, I, as I said that the structure of a paper, okay, in any conference or in a standard journal looks something like this. So, so title abstract keywords, okay, I think Anindo has rightly said that when you are using an authoring tool, you are also trying to find that which journal your, your paper should get into, okay, where, where you should target. So, so the title abstract and keywords are the are sort of tokens which will help your paper to get identified among the pool of paper. There are the paper, I don't know, I think, I think Aninda will be better to tell that how many papers okay, get published in a particular quanta of time. And within, within, that, within that time, so many papers get published, right? And what you want, you want that, that your target will be, hey, everyone should, should get my paper. Okay, everyone, everyone should have, have their focus to my paper. <clears throat> so how you do that, right? You do that by making the title, which, is, which should be very attractive. We should exactly speak, right? About what your paper is, right? It shouldn't be stretched or it shouldn't be squeezed, right? And it shouldn't have irrelevant words, okay? Which doesn't come under the purview of the work what you have done. Right? 
So abstract, abstract tells you very simply that what is your problem, what problem you're targeting, what's the contribution, what's the novelty you are trying to achieve, what's the contribution you have made in terms of methods, right? And how, how your methods performed in terms of results. So very, very, very crisp way. You don't have to, okay, write history. You don't have to write para after para. There is a, okay, many of the journals and conferences limits the number of words, right? Or the number of sentences you can use in the abstract. And that the capability. So, so one of my, 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 PA, my postdoc supervisor, Professor Neeraj Jha from Princeton said to me that I, I, I take a researcher his or her maturity based on how well he or she can write the abstract of the paper. So abs writing the abstract of the paper, though it is the first, first part of the paper, it is the most matured part of a paper. So, so the advice is that you shouldn't just, uh, just to start writing abstract before completing the paper. There is a, okay, that as abstract comes first, okay, many, the, 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 first, uh, the first time writers, Okay, paper writer has a, has a tendency, hey, I start abstract, then I go introduction, uh, then I go to the paper. Okay, it's not like that. It's, a, it's rather the other way, right? You write the abstract at the last because when you have the full, full orientation of the paper done, then you know that what, what should be the attraction of the paper, right? And the attraction of the paper should be well-defined in terms of the abstract. Second is the keyword. Keyword is basically the searching. Right, you should you should put the keywords in a way that that a paper gets searched among all all bunch of papers. It should be appropriate to the to the things which are there in your paper. Now the storytelling part comes in the introduction, methods, and results. But introduction gives you the it gives you why the story is important. Okay, what new story you are trying to tell? That's introduction. Methods is that that means how you have developed the story. What is the content of your story? What are the action items in your story, right? And results is, okay, the, what is the performance of your story? What is the performance of your methods? Okay, so, so this, these three sections form the contribution, okay, the, is the contribution what you want to highlight in your paper. Now, conclusion, acknowledgement, references, supporting materials. These are these are all just to just to give it a very good, very good finish. It's like the icing on your cake, right? You actually tell in the conclusion that okay, what are the good things you have achieved, and you can also tell that what you cannot achieve in this paper. It's a, it's a okay. It's a, okay. It's not like that. That uh, that one research, one research paper will solve the entire problem of the domain. You cannot do like that, right? It's it's not it's not possible. So, so your solution in this paper is actually targeting a specific problem in a specific way, right? And, and, and you may say that the problem can be, problem can be modified, the problem can be extended further, and that can be some sort of thing what you like to focus in future. So acknowledgments is something that you need to, uh, okay, take, uh, take all the, all the, that, okay, you need to acknowledge all your, all your, support what you have get, okay, you get in terms of your funding, in terms of your lab support, in terms of your, somebody has helped you to, uh, to uh, given some suggestion to improve the work, what you have done in your paper. So all this must be, must be well, well stated in the acknowledgement section. And reference is very important, right? Don't, don't give unnecessary references. References should be very apt, right? It shouldn't be, and, and, and then there is a very, very heavy, Heavy focus on self-citation at the at the present day. This, okay, this is also also being considered as unethical to some extent. Right? If you are if you are unnecessarily providing self-citation, you should provide reference which are required, which actually specific to the problem what you are what you have worked upon in this paper. Right? You don't stretch that. And supporting materials are nowadays are being required just so that the reviewers can validate that, or it can be. Your, your, your work can be replicated well, uh, okay, so that you give your code to the GitHub or some repository. You can, you can, you can, give, you can uh, okay, give the details of your, of your some, uh, some conceptual as appendix, right? And these things are very good for the promotion of your paper in the latter stage of your publication, as well as it reaches the wider audience. 
So, so I will not discuss in much. I this is, this slide I will okay. I will send to all of you. We have the details. What I have said in the summary to, to all the steps of your paper. Okay, it has been detailed out in all of this. You will okay. We'll have this. No worries. As I as I said that title should be very crisp, concise, very specific. Okay, it should be short and catchy. It should. It should not have the verbose. It shouldn't be verbose at all. Okay. Keywords are very. Okay. Keywords. Keywords are your. Okay. Are your search flags. So. So if you try to give uh, very, very specific keywords, okay, that means it, it is it is very narrow band of keywords. Uh, what will happen is that it will it will just uh, okay search too many things, right? And if you if you give very specific keywords, right, it's more okay. It's better because then, then it will try to try to point your paper, right? So, so the keywords which are appropriate for your paper, both in numbers and both in context, right, that will lead to your paper and uh, and uh, okay, and the people who will be searching. I request participants to go on mute who are not speaking. I think uh, Amlan has this uh, his net connectivity, maybe the issue, but he will join in a minute or two. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So uh, I think uh, why can't ask for abstract for the research paper? So while the uh, uh, Amlansa joins back, I'm not sure if uh, we have, yes, Anindoda is still there. So Anindoda, can I read out one or two uh, questions? Yeah, uh, yeah, why not? Why not? I'm here only. Yes, yes, yes. So one question I see is why conference coordinators ask for the abstract before the research paper? <laughs> because they want to publish your work. <laughs> That's a simple, simple. Uh, see, uh, why conference coordinators ask for the abstract before the research paper? Why? See, uh, what is what exactly is abstract that you have to understand well? Abstract is nothing but the summarization of your work. You know, as Amlan was already talking about how to structure the work. Now there is a right way of writing the work also. When you are drafting, when you are doing it, uh, last thing what you exact actually write is uh, abstract of your paper. But why they are asking for the abstract in the beginning? Importantly, you know, uh, when conference organizers or any particular book editor, they try to collect uh, research papers, they don't want to go through the whole thing, you know, they try to uh, see from abstract, what exactly is there in your work and how you are actually writing it, you know, your uh, language skill and many other things, so that they can very well gauge from your abstract. So that is why they ask for the abstract first, and then they want to go to the next level where you can actually submit your full work and it gets again reviewed and the, the review results will come. I think Omlan has joined. We can. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Thanks. Thanks, Omlan. Can you just make me screen share? Okay, yeah. I'm not getting. Yeah, that's why. Thank you. Thanks, Anindo, for for filling that. Uh, okay. Sorry, if I, I got disconnected. So uh, if this was what is about keywords. So a keyword should be very very apt so that you can okay you can come to that particular point where your uh, where a paper gets well searched. Uh, abstract, as I told, there are there are golden rules of ten. Okay, ten sentences. Sometimes you have to cut short to seven or eight, also as for the journal. But but main is that as I told, it should be you should highlight the aim, the the specific problem you are dealing with, the material and methods in terms of contribution, what you have uh, uh, stated in the particular paper. Okay, results, how you have churned out the results, right, and how they performed, right, and it may be something about a future prospect of your work. Okay. Right, An introduction. As I told, that it is it is very important. It is it is just like the the story, the story, the the introduction of a story. It should be very attractive. It should it should it should mainly focus a problem, the research gap, right, and 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 what what interesting things you are trying to achieve in this particular research paper. 
the method should be illustrative, right? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be flattened, right? And that I'm not saying illustrative means it should be, it should be stretched. But what I, what I mean to say is that what you write, right, it should be well understood, right? If you write something, okay, that means in a computer science uh, domain paper, right, you should you shouldn't just tell that oh this uh, these are the things needs to be done, right? Because nobody can nobody can interpret if you tell that these are the things needs to be done, okay? The things needs to be computed. So what are the things needs to be done? You should tell in terms of algorithm, but right? otherwise the things otherwise you are not doing computing. Right, you are you are not writing a paper, a paper which just which is a news reporting. Right, I have that I have found in in many of the many of the reviews when I do review. Okay, the author has done a good work, but the but the way he or she has presented the work is just as a reporting the work, reporting the steps of the work. Okay, I am more interested that what computation you have done and what is the achievement in your computation, in your formulation, in your algorithmic approach. Right, you can also have a section where you can show that if it is a hardware type of paper or it's a system paper, what are the system uh, uh, framework you have considered? Because this is very important, right? People can just tell that, hey, I have this is my IoT algorithm. Right, doesn't make me any sense because there are so many frameworks. Hey, this is my cloud algorithm. This is my this is my this is my uh, okay, say say okay, it's the FPG algorithm, right? It okay. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense because there are so many different types of architecture available. Which architecture you have followed, and and your algorithm, and your architecture or your system should map. But otherwise, otherwise I cannot. I cannot replicate that research. A replication of the of the research, a reproducibility of the research is so important in nowadays. Okay, if somebody cannot reproduce your research, your research will not be accepted. So the method should be explicit, precise. Right and should be well illustrated, and you try to give diagrams, the algorithms as as uh, okay, uh, to the apt level. This is one thing I want to point, and this is also 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 I have found in many of the of the papers that you shouldn't you should, you need not to be uh, okay very complex in designing the methodology, right? You should that means what you can tell in a very simple way. Tell it in a simple way. You don't think that your reviewers are okay are foolish, or your authors are okay, or the okay that means other readers will not not able to understand the trick what has been what has been imparted here, right? You should you should you should tell the things simply. If it's simple, right? It should be it should be like a story which is well understood, right? You might okay that means you might have a have a false false apprehension that if a paper is too complicated. Right, and that means, and a reviewer cannot understand it over over time and time again. Right, they will feel that oh, this is a very good conceptual paper, and and it should get through. No, it is not like that at all. Right, if the if your reviewer cannot understand your paper, it's a garbage. Right, if the reviewer cannot understand with with all of his knowledge, okay, how a common reader will understand your paper, right? And no, and no journal editor or publisher will like a paper at which cannot be read by anyone. So, so, so that's not a good approach. Try to make the thing simple, simple. But the, but the thing should be what you put in your in your method should be should have some uniqueness. Okay, you should you should try to try to, uh, okay, try to defend that what is the uniqueness in your strategy. That's more important rather than telling that, oh, my strategy is really a very complex, complex strategy will not not lead you to publication. Okay. Results are very important. I will okay, I will be very fast here. Results should be illustrative. You should, but but one point I have seen in a result is that okay that is, many other times I have found that uh, okay a data is presented in a graph and the same data is presented as a table, right? And the same data can be presented in some sort of figurative form. Don't do that. Right? When you try to present a particular result, try to try to consider that which form of illustration is the best. Okay. Table gives you value, but but graphs gives you some more more interpretations. Okay, how it is growing, how it is falling, how steep it is, right? How 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 uh, how flat it is. So if you want to show that particular interpretation of your result, right, you need to do it that way. But if you want to show that hey, my my percentage is better than this, okay, my storage percentage or my energy percentage, right? 
so you can go with table so so this is this should be your 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 choice you need to you, you need to think very well that what will be the possible form of illustration of the results don't repeat the same results on and on right visualization is very important i have seen my seen my students who are who are getting that means where we are getting publication in very very top rated journals i think visualization is a good good fact because but again i say that the work what you have done or you are presenting in the research should be should be understood in a very simple way what is your contribution what is your what is your key take for the paper what type of performance you have achieved right it should be it should be very well understood better better people understand your work better your work is appreciated right and that where result visualization plays a great role so discussion discussion is one of the important factor where you try to try to critically state about your results about your achievements and also your failure this is also also uh, one yeah. okay there are two things one is called the research transparency right right so so sometimes okay and there is something called research uh, okay okay faulty research faulty presentation so what is transparency what is faulty transparency is something that okay i have i have done a i have done an experiment right i found that okay okay from from a to b from the sample from the sample 1 to 20 my result is doing good my my uh, model is working good right and maybe from the sample 21 to 25 my model is not working good so report it that no problem it is not that you can solve every problem one paper will solve every problem maybe there is some other thing is to be looked around from the sample 21 to 25 right so what do we achieve good you tell i have achieved good and what you didn't achieve you tell i didn't achieve this transparency right and and another one is faulty presentation hey i have made a curve and the curve and the curve from the data is something like that but that actually uh, that actually uh, say that it is it is below the below the performance which is already there in the existing work so can i just can i just tweak my data and uh, i can push the curve higher right and just to tell that hey hey i got a good performance don't do that uh, reviewers understand this right right and no reviewer will accept this and you will be you will be a sort of penalized for your further publications also if you do this type of data forgery and these are these are the part of your what you learn as arindo say that uh, these are the things which are covered in the ethics book these are ethical research you don't get into this factory these are these are these are wrong practices you try to present what you get if you don't get a good result if you feel the paper the work is not good don't publish it right every work needs to be published there is nothing like that right your work is for your your satisfaction your research is for satisfaction and your publication is to is to let the community know about you about your work okay so so acknowledgements you have to give your your advisors uh, okay here are also there are something i'm okay like i can i can in the length there are also some unethical practices which happen in the acknowledgements don't do that i'm i'm cutting it short but try to give the acknowledgement to the proper people the proper groups right who have really helped in this work references are very important you should cite the references which have really really focused for your particular work as i as i told that it okay, it should be from it should be from down to up first you okay first you first to plan the concept and try to find out hey whether it's working okay to write okay try to have some preliminary results out of that right and if you are confident that preliminary results are working good okay hey, now i consolidate on the results and try to and try to incrementally build my paper Oh, you know, so, so, having the work completed, fully, yeah, then only you can you can look into the title, abstract, and keywords. But otherwise, you cannot do it. Okay. Because once you know that what I need to highlight, what are the key points of my paper, what are the what are the what are the golden uh, golden achievement in my paper, then only you can write. Then only you can frame the title, abstract, and the keywords of a paper in a very proper way. Otherwise, not. So this is this is the normal progress from from bottom to up. Okay. So submitting your paper. This I tell my students. I think I think if some of the students are there. Okay. I just after after my maybe my three four corrections, I write a last mail to the okay to my student that, that before submit at least revise it two times. because why i tell my student is that because the author of the paper okay majorly majorly in my case okay 
the students write the first draft and then it comes to me and then it goes with some iteration. So, so the person who has written the first draft, okay, he or she should again revise, okay. Okay, to understand the grammar, the, the typos, the grammar errors, the, the wrong data being mistyped in the, in the tables, uh, okay, the long legends in the wrong, wrong legends in the figures. So all these are, all these are actually casual. So we tell, that means it's a, it's a, it's a common, common phrase, common phrase like reviewers like me, okay, we just tell that it's a, it's a casual writing. So, so don't, uh, uh, don't get yourself under that particular bracket, the casual writing. Try to be very, okay, very good in try to revise in the paper. It's, a, it's a also a good habit, right? A good researcher or, or a, good, a good writer can actually revise the paper well. So obviously responsibilities of the authors in preparing of the manuscript, you need to take all the responsibilities in terms of the research, in terms of the manuscript, right? In terms of the copyright, as Anindo has rightly said, that is, there is a knowledge gap, right? I think, I think Anindo, should should repeat this in maybe in the next opportunity okay, of his of his talk any of his talk and that means this is a very knowledge gap that what i can okay it is not that it's not that you can just copy and give a reference is there it's not like that right you have to okay if you are if you are taking a picture if you are taking a data it is his or her research work you have to take a proper public permission that whether whether i can also publish this in my work it is not only reference merely will give you that, right? When you uh, when you write books or when you write journals, you will get that the the uh, the publisher will uh, will ask about this copyright and be very sure that you have all this. The covering letter is also very important. It's also a summary of your paper. It is a good note. It is a it is a way to directly connecting with the with the editor of the journal and try to and try to tell that how important your work is. Uh, Okay, in the best possible way, and about your team, about your about your motivation, in a very in a very structured format, so that that impresses the editor, and the editor can actually accept this paper paper for the next process of review. The conflict of interests are something you shouldn't be there, right? You shouldn't be there. Okay, there are a lot of uh, ways the conflict of interest can happen. I will not get into that, but you should be very uh, very careful that conflict of interest should shouldn't be there. Okay. Uh, Peer review, peer review. I have seen uh, um, the students' initial case. Uh, the reviewer has, uh, okay, has said a very bad words. Has commented very wrongly, okay, to my paper. Sir, I am, I am really annoyed with the reviewer. Right? Don't do that. Okay, that, that, that's not a good philosophy. Right? The reviewer, reviewer are doing their responsibility. Their responsibility is to, is to give the editor the best papers which are being submitted submitted to the journal so you are competing with the best and you have to be there so reviewers are trying to improve you they are they are trying to nudge nudge your uh, nudge your work okay in a way that in a, in a way that you understand that hey what wrong has been done in this particular paper so that you can rectify that take the reviews positively and try to work on the reviews this is this is one of the patience okay patience in 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 publishing you require Publishing is not just you press a button and the paper will get get accepted, right? It is a it is a sort of learning. It's a sort of patience you have to have. And every researcher, every researcher has has got this part part, and by this part you get your improvement. You are improved and improved, right? So that's the motivation of the reviewer to make your paper improved, okay? Yeah. Not to criticize you in that way, okay? So this is a process. I'm again not getting into that. This this slide will be given to you. You can get it to very well on this so so sometimes sometimes there is a duality oh i am a very good writer i will just try to mix the masalas in my paper and i will present it in a very good way okay technical quality hey i will not not focus much on that the other part is hey i have given a very good experiment i have i have actually been a very model uh, a very good model this is a very new model right i am presenting oh writing oh people will accept it because this is a very good model they will not look into the Technical uh, writing or the or the way it is presented. No, it's not. Both are required. Okay, novelty and the technical quality. Okay, means the quality, the way you present the paper, and the novelty, the work what you have done in the paper. Both has an equal role, right? You cannot tell that, hey, I am not in this way. I'm this way, and my paper will get accepted. 
No, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen in good journals and good conferences. In good reviewer board, editorial board, it never happens. So ethics, I think, I think we're already being discussed by Anindo. I'm not getting into that. Legalism, redundant publication, conflict of interest. If you are using data of animals or biological world, right, you need to take proper ethical approval to publish the data, okay? So summary, this is where I end uh, of my lecture. Okay, it's a, it's a novel idea which drives your, from concept to publication, right? Your idea should be novel and you should, you should, you should grow and grow that novel idea, right? Best churning out of the novel idea, right? It's a quality, quality which dominates, as Anindo also said, that it's not quantity. It's a quality of your work which will be, which will be appreciated, right? Everywhere, everywhere, okay? In your, in your work, in your research place, in your, in, your, in your group, in your community, right? It, it doesn't count as a number, it's a quality, okay? Right, and obviously good writing, active presentation skills should be developed. It shouldn't be, right? It, okay, it was not with us also. When we started our research activity, it was, it was a learning process for me also. And I think, I think many of us here, right? What established researcher. So it's a learning process. Everybody has to learn that and you also have to learn. It is, it is, nothing, it is nothing that, oh, I cannot write the first paper very well. So I am a really, a, a really a dumb guy. No, it's not like that. Everybody has, has, has the same thing, okay? So you have to learn the process and more, more better you learn, more forced you learn this process, how to write a good paper, better and better you will be. And that's the, that's the motivation of the community, okay? Right, and obviously try to focus on good journals, try to focus on good publishers, try to focus on good conferences, right? Okay, being the vice president of s ds I will surely tell ICDMI, right and and so you should you should okay then you should you should focus on those those and don't waste your time actually one of my supervisors tells that okay it only only requires 30 percent more initiative okay in publishing and okay okay that means a so-called journal conference to a very good journal conference it's only 30 percent effort you have to stretch yourself right and if you can do the impact or the or the or the citation you get okay it's it's a it's a far ahead of that okay so that's all what where i end right and thank s ds and thank you all for listening to me if, if you want to connect you know the s ds uh, site has my email and also the email is given here okay thank you all thank you sir for such an important informative session so there are some of the participants ask a few questions uh, one of the participants ask citation paywall breakdown in research want to know about that citation what's the question citation so, citation paywall breakdown he asked about the citation paywall breakdown in research i will i will i will i will okay, okay sure sure Please go ahead. See, it's basically, you know, I think he wanted to know where, where he can get the citations, which are, it's an open forum, you know, and this is, this is something because okay. all these citations of works, which is getting indexed are either with web of science or with Scopus, you know, so the citations are not out. Uh, Crossref is uh, there. All good publishers are participants of Crossref, member of Crossref, and they are supposed to give everything over there. But interestingly, these uh, citations are not open. The way uh, there is a conflict or a war is going on that all works should be open access, you know, open science. Similarly, it is like all citations should be open. And uh, you don't have to go to Scopus or you don't have to go to indexing bodies to see citations. This is a movement which has started in 2000 uh, by some groups and they have uh, uh, opened a particular website also, I for citations or something like that. So as far as I remember, and this is something, you know, this is, uh, you are not supposed to do anything right now because you cannot break that paywall and you cannot do anything. So it is uh, the whole community of publishing community with the scientific community. They have to take a call on this. So but there is no uh, solution available at this point of time. But definitely, I think with time, things will be more open and more transferable than uh, transparent so that you can get access to that. One thing I would like to add here, you know, what uh, Omlan was uh, telling about this tips of uh, paper writing, it's just I want to add, uh, you know, when you have completed your work, you about to submit it, you know, it's ready, I am going to submit it today, you know, keep it in your locker for 72 hours, <laughs> don't don't submit it. 
after 72 hours, after three days, with a fresh mind, first thing in the morning, open the paper, read it again. I am telling you, you will get some or some mistakes, you know, because it is, it is a very human thing. When we read someone else's work, we immediately we can find mistakes, you know. But my own work, if I read it again and again also, I don't find any mistake because it is written by me. My thinking process has been used. So if you give a gap, you know, you don't think about that paper, don't think about that work, anything, 72 hours, keep yourself away from that. Then open the paper again for last time, read it again, you will find certain areas which needs improvement, you do it and then you can submit. So this is the, these are small tips which you can use. And as Omlan said correctly, there are so many things in writing, you know, so scientific writing. So obviously, there is no end to it, you have to learn with more and more practice, you have to learn with time, you know, more and more uh, submissions, you learn so many things. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, another question. Let's take it quickly. Which type of controls we don't forget to describe during research method? Which type of controls we we don't, don't try to forget describe? to describe during research method? <laughs> That's your question, Pamela. Okay. Yeah. So, so research method, research method should be okay. Should should actually tell that. What is the way I have approached from the problem to the solution? Okay, that's the that's the research method. So, so research is a process, and through the research, I have I have actually come to the solution. So you need to, okay, find need to state everything, right? Starting okay, starting from the starting from the preparation of the data, right? If you are doing a, a computer science type of approach, right? Computer science uh, uh, a paper, right? So. So it should start from start from that point, and that right, and it should and right, and you shouldn't shouldn't tell the details which are very okay, very very okay, very often, but also you shouldn't miss the details which are very important in your in your method. So sometimes sometimes I see that uh, the paper is being written, but the important important details of the method I have missed out, and then. Suddenly, it jumps into the results, and the results I find out that oh, oh, this method has been applied. So the so the result has been achieved. So so you should actually plan the methodology in a in a very detailed, uh, okay, sequential approach. That what you did first, and what second, and what next, and what next, right? And every every step you should tell the justification that 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 why you have done and. Okay, many of the time it happens that, okay, in a methodology section, maybe uh, maybe out of five five things you have done, maybe two things are there already been done from references, and three things you have added because sometimes we augment them. Then clearly tell that this is also this is also a fact. I find that okay, that means I tell everything I have done, but but when the when the reviewer sits and tries to go with the research work done here, he or she finds that okay, this work has already been done. So so this is either ignorance or suppression. So both are both are both are not a good quality to get your review accepted. Okay, that's all. Uh, uh, Oritro, I can see a question over here, which I think I don't know whether you have missed it or uh, whenever we start reading a paper, which portion we should read first? This is an interesting uh, question, actually, you know, because uh, it is an interesting question because Omlan has already shown that in the slide how to write, you know, when you are drafting what all things you should write first, you know, but it's, it's complete reverse when you are reading it. But what is what is the first thing nowadays in a digital world when you search for something you know the google uh, you go to google you try to search for something and the paper title comes up actually that is the first thing you get in search so you read the title first when you click the title first thing you read is abstract abstract is summarization of your paper but actually you have to write it last because then only you can summarize when you have the whole thing so what omlan has actually shown the way you have drafted Reading is completely reverse process, you know. First thing is the title, second is abstract. Then you decide whether this abstract, after reading the abstract, is the paper useful for me? If you think it is useful, then you go for it. And someone has that, what should be the ideal length of an abstract? Go, go to the instruction manual, instruction for authors, always uh, read that carefully. And uh, if it is mentioned over there, is uh, then follow that. If it is not, it's around 250 words. 
so not go beyond that and please don't put any references in the abstract don't put any results in the abstract so that is also very important so create it in such a way that it is interesting for the reader to understand the areas and they can actually go and download your paper yeah thank you thank you i think i will request indurji to present what prop thanks thank you aninda bose thank you dr amlam uh, it's a really wonderful very insightful and you know uh, really coming from the horse's mouth and such a uh, you know point which were very important while uh, writing papers and you know uh, putting up the work and it is so useful for you know from the layman to writing the expert kind of paper so uh, and thank you for your time to take it out and putting in such a simplistic word so you know everybody looks at from you know it becomes a very complex subject when you're writing a paper so uh, you know people read you know books and books to understand what to do and you just made it so concise uh, and uh, so uh, articulated in a manner where you know you just put it in a very simplistic word for the people to carry and i'm very sure the knowledge which you are giving them in this you know one and a half hour is really phenomenal uh, it will really assist them in you know their future work and taking it further and uh, from the icdm uh, uh, from the uh, society for data science uh, we you know thank you from the core of the heart for taking off your time and uh, being with us today and uh, and thanks all the participants uh, for being all the while here for a, a bit longish session but i think it was all worthwhile for everyone to be you know uh, sticking up to the last because till the last we found every question was very interesting Uh, thank you very much and uh, over to dr gojit please thank you thank you so we'll be in touch with all of you and we'll present our next webinar very soon thank you to all of you thanks aninda thank, 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 thank you thank you thank you indar good to thank see you virtually yeah <laughs> thank you indar amul sir thanks yeah. aninda bye bye take care thanks to the s4ds team Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks everyone, and stay Thanks. safe. Uh, you know, looking forward for more webinars and uh, looking for for your participation. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, sure. Aninda. Thanks yeah. again. Bye. 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 Thanks, Thank Alam. Bye. 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 Thanks, Gojesh sir. Bye. 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 Thank you.